Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today to give one more piece to the puzzle about this guy named Jonah. Now, I talked about last time how he got thrown overseas, a big fish ate him, spent three days in the belly of the fish, made all kinds of promises to God, and then, then the fish, shall we say, burped him back up. <laughs> what an incredible experience. I mean, I've had some strange experiences, but that's got to be wild, just wild. But in any case, let's just, for the sake of the story, let's assume that's exactly what happened. And I have no reason to believe that it didn't happen that way. It seems a little strange to me, but you know, hey, God does a lot of things that seem strange to me. Maybe to you too. So we'll overlook that part and go on with the story. We find ourselves in the third chapter of Jonah, beginning with the first verse. This is after uh, Jonah has been belched. <laughs> Out of the great fish. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and to deliver the message I have given you. Now, the whole thing started, as you remember, because God wanted Jonah to do something. And Jonah didn't want to do it. He went the exact opposite direction. He could have avoided all of this mess if he had just done what God wanted him to do in the first place. Well, think about that. I'll come back to that one, as you can imagine. And so then it says, this time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. Jonah goes and does what God wanted him to do in the first place. As I said, if he did just done that in the beginning, he could have avoided all the mess he went through. And that really does speak to you and me. God has a plan for you and for me. I don't care where you are in the spectrum of walking with God, whether you've never walked with him or you walk with him hand in hand every day and half for years. Anywhere in between there, you still qualify. God still has a plan. For you, whether you believe it or not, as my wife says, and I've mentioned, feelings are not facts. It doesn't matter what you feel. The fact is, you are important to God, and God has a plan for you. So do it. Great things will happen when we do what God wants. I mean... <laughs> You know, when the basketball player does what the coaches want, golly, they play better. <laughs> the same is true for you and me and for life. So, Jonah goes. And apparently Nineveh is quite a city. So it takes him three days just to see all of it. And then he pronounces God's message that judgment is going to come. Now, the interesting thing here is Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because he didn't think they were godly enough to receive God's message. That's what it said in the beginning. But then when he finally gets there, they accept his message, and it says, from the greatest to the least, the most important to the most insignificant. Okay, here we are, folks. We've gone from the Continuum of the greatest to the least important. Somewhere along that continuum, you and I are, once again, we're included, wherever we are in our journey in life. And it says that they put on burlap to show their sorrow. They declared a fast 
they declared repentance. God spared their city. Now, I'm not suggesting that God's going to wipe out cities in our world. Heck, <laughs> doesn't look like we need God to do it. We're doing a pretty good job ourselves. Think about the places where there's war and the destruction that's going on. How can anybody think that's going to accomplish something good? But it doesn't stop some people from trying to do it. We're not on the verge of being destroyed by God. We might be on the verge of being destroyed by our own choices. But we're not going to get destroyed by God for that. But what we are going to do, there's going to miss out. Miss out. Not have the opportunity to enjoy the goodness and the wonder and the magnificence of walking in this world with God. When I was out in Wyoming, it, I lived up at 7,000 feet. Not much grows up there. You can't even grow a garden unless you irrigate it. And actually, you, you can't do that either. If you're going to do tomatoes, you either got to put them in a greenhouse or you got to put them in a pot. And, and then you got to put heat tape around the pot because the ground doesn't get warm enough for them to grow. And the first summer I was there, people talked about how beautiful the prairies were with all the color. Well, I didn't see much of that color. All I saw, saw was the brown grass. And one of the ladies in church said, John, it's not the, the size of the flower that counts. It's the beauty in the little flower. And then I started looking again. And I had missed out on all of the glorious color that the high desert plain provides in the spring. I didn't see it. I wasn't even looking in the right place. And perhaps in your life, you're not looking in the right place. The only place where you will find wonder and astoundment and joy and greatness and goodness and laughter is in God's hand. You won't find it in a bottle. You won't find it in a pill. You won't find it in a cruise vacation. You won't find it in any other place you look. But Nineveh proves that God's grace is available to everyone. Well, I hope you'll think about that. I'll be back. One more story. Now, you would think this could be the end of the story, but I'll just give you a little bit of heads up. It's not. <laughs> Poor Jonah. He just can't seem to get it. Well, thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. I, I hope if you have a need or a concern, let us know. We'll do whatever we can as fast as we can to help you. Thanks so much for listening. God bless you. I'll be back tomorrow.